everyone, so welcome to my tutorial today on how to use the Elegoo Neptune 3 Pro. I'm going to show you today how I made this really fun articulated 3D print with my Elegoo 3 Neptune Pro. I'm going to take you right from the basics uh, all the way to printing this really fun design. So this is my Elegoo Neptune 3 Pro printer. I purchased it myself off Amazon. This is not a sponsored post. I really do love this printer and it's been one of my most reliable printers for using uh, to make my 3D designs. The assembly process was fairly straightforward. There are some videos from Elegoo on how to assemble this. It does come flat packed. So this part here needs to be assembled. And um, then of course you need to also assemble your filament spool. So once you have it assembled, then I'm going to take you through the process of leveling and loading your filament. Okay, so let's start with loading the filament on our Elegoo printer. So I'm going to be using this filament that I'll link in the description. It's a really cool dual color silk shiny filament and you'll see how the final project turns out. I think you're going to love it. So. The filament spool is set up here on the printer and what I'm gonna do is I'm going to thread the filament through this filament detector up here. So let's do that now. The filament detector uh, means that if you do run out of filament during a print, it will automatically pause the print, which is a really nice feature so that you don't, if you're you know, doing a big long print that takes hours, maybe you even need to actually have multiple filament spools, you didn't waste that whole print, uh, it'll automatically stop. It's a great feature that's included with the Elegoo Neptune 3 Pro. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to load the filament into the extruder. So nice thing about the Elegoo is that it has this touch screen that's actually removable. So what I'll do is this is the main screen. What you're going to do is you're going to go to prepare and then you're going to click down here to the extruder and you're going to load the filament. My nozzle temperature is already at 200 because I preheated it, but if you if it wasn't already at 300, sorry 200 then it would take a little bit of time for that to get to that temperature so i'm not going to quite press load yet because i'm first going to actually insert the filament in to my print head so just take it insert it in the hole here got to push down with this clip until it's nice and in the print head now i'm going to press that load button and you'll see my filament coming out of the print head. So let's zoom in here on my print head. And you can see the filament is coming out of the print head there. So I want to make sure, there we go, that I have the right color. If I had a different color that I was using before, I'd want to make sure that it changed colors. So very good. Now I've got my filament loaded. Now let's level the print bed. So let's take you through leveling the print bed. Leveling the print bed uh, is, I think, probably the most important step in 3D printing. In order for your 3D print model to come out correctly, you need a level print bed and you need your print head to be perfectly aligned with the print bed. As you can imagine, if the 3D printer is printing a layer and it's like a few millimeters above the print bed, that's not going to turn out well. You're going to end up with a gooey mess of filament or if it's too low and it's actually pressing into the print bed, you're gonna end up with really thin and a not, um, your design's not gonna turn out well. So leveling is very important. Um, you should do it every few prints, um, especially if you're having errors with your uh, print. So on the main screen, you're going to click level here, and then it's going to say that it's going to trigger the print head to return to zero, you're going to click confirm. And so what you're going to do is you are going to click this button here, which is going to auto level your print right in the middle there. Calibrate the bed, confirm. And so now let's watch it level, do the auto leveling feature. And you'll see how the print head moves across different points on the bed. To calibrate this.
So the auto leveling uh, calibration is now done. So now what it's telling us is to pay attention to the distance between the nozzle and the bed. Uh, this is going to, you're going to need to adjust now your Z offset, which is the distance between the nozzle and the bed. Like I mentioned before, you want this to be very precise so that your 3D prints come out perfectly. And what they're recommending is that there's about the thickness of a sheet of A4 paper between these. So I'm going to stick my paper underneath my nozzle here. And what you're looking for with this is you are looking for just a little bit of resistance. So this is not resisting enough, right? I can easily move this paper. So I'm going to adjust my Z offset so that I just get a little bit of resistance. Now I can feel a little bit of resistance on that paper. Maybe go a little bit. Oh, that was too much. So I'm going to go back. Yeah, that's perfect. So that gives me a little bit of resistance when I pull this paper and that's exactly what I'm looking for. All right, so our machine is ready to go now, but we do need to actually find a 3D design. So let's hop on over to the computer and I'll show you the process of finding and slicing a 3D design. So my favorite database to find 3D print files is printables.com. Uh, this website has a whole load of really awesome 3D print models. They're all available to download for free. So I'll just scroll through and see some of the top designs on this website. There's thousands to choose from. I have printed off so many cool designs from this website. Just make sure, of course, that you check the copyright restrictions and rules whenever you're printing. Um, a lot of these designs are meant only for personal use and not for commercial sale. So I have found a design that I want to print, and that is this cute articulated shark. I think my kids are going to love this. And so I'm going to go ahead and download this file. So what I'm looking for here is an STL file. So I'll go to the file section here. I'm just going to scroll down. There's a few versions. I'm just going to go with the A version. So I'm going to click this and then it's going to start my download to my downloads folder. And that's the file that I'm going to use next for the next part of working with the Elegoo, which is the slicing part. So here I've opened up my Elegoo Cura software. You can download this online from the Elegoo website. This is the slicing software that is recommended for this 3D printer. So first you have to download that. And then what you're going to want to do is set up your printer. I've already got my Elegoo Neptune 3 Pro set up here, but if you want it starting from scratch, you would go here and click add printer then go to an add a non-networked printer and then click Elegoo and choose the printer that you have here and then click add. So I already have my Neptune 3 Pro here. And so what I'm going to do is I am going to open up and that file. So that shark STL file, and it's going to place it on my print bed here. So there it is. Um, I can quickly adjust any settings that I might need to adjust, although I tend to just go with the standard settings that are recommended by Cura. So I'm using PLA. I'm going to keep with the generic PLA. If I was using a different type of material, I could adjust it here. Or if I had a specific brand of PLA that I was using, I could click it here. But I'm just going to keep with the generic PLA here. And then over here, this allows you to change like the printer settings, uh, speed, travel, infill. Generally, I don't change any of this when I'm printing. The only thing that I might do is add support if it was a model that required it. So usually when you go to printables and you download your design, the author, uh, creator of that Design would tell you whether you need support structures. In this case, you don't need support structures for this model, so I'm not going to click this. And then also build plate adhesion. There's a few different types of build plate adhesions. There's a skirt, there's a brim, and there's a raft. And so those are different um, layers of plastic. Either a raft is a full layer of plastic under your model, a skirt is just around the edges, 
or sorry, a brim is just around the edges and a skirt is just a line around the model. I don't believe that I need any build plate adhesion, so I'm just gonna leave it like that. So I didn't make any changes here. And now what I'm gonna do is press slice. It's gonna be processing my file. So what this is doing is it's taking my 3D model and it's slicing it layer by layer to give instructions to my 3D printer of how to print this 3D object one layer at a time. Remember, 3D printers work by melting plastic filament and then very precisely placing it on the bed layer by layer to build up your model. So it's telling me that this print is gonna take two hours and 51 minutes on my Neptune Pro. And it's gonna use 26 grams of filaments and 8.55 meters. So if you were running low on filament, you could make sure that you had enough because you don't wanna run out of filament halfway through your print. Uh, and you could also calculate the cost of how much this is going to uh, cost you in filament um, by taking a percentage of your spool. So what I'll do now is I'm gonna click this to save it to file, or I can also save it to a removable drive. The Neptune 3 Pro uses a micro SD card. So I'm gonna insert my USB with a micro SD component to save this file to my micro SD card so that I can put it into my printer. And now I'll take you over to the printer and show you the final step of printing this design. Okay, so we have got our design on our micro SD card. So now it's time to actually print our design. You might notice on my build plate here that I there's like a thin film on it. That is from the Elegoo Build Platform glue stick. I do use this, um, you know, every few designs to help with adhesion to the build plate, especially for something like this design that we're printing, which is articulated, has a lot of uh, small, parts sticking to the bottom of the build plate, I find this to be really effective. You can also just use regular glue stick, um, but Elegoo does give you a sample of their build platform glue stick with the printer. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to insert my micro SD card into the slot here, and then I'm going to click print, and I can see my curled shark option here. So I'm going to click confirm to print this model. And now what it's going to do is it's going to start heating up and then it will start printing. So now I'm going to show you a time-lapse video of this print. Okay, so here is our printed item on the printer bed. So Elegoo comes with a nice flexible uh, PEI coated printer bed, which I love. So you simply uh, flex it off the bed here. You can see it already popped off a little bit. And then I love to just bend it like this. You hear that nice crackling sound of the 3D print coming off the bed. And then we'll just pull it off the bed. And here we go. We can take a look at our print. Okay, so this is the final 3D print. This articulated shark turned out great. I'm super happy with this design. I love these articulated designs. I just think they're so cool. A, that you can just print them in place and they you know, hook together like this without needing to assemble them at all. Uh, they're super fun fidget toys for kids. My kids love when I print these designs out. I also um, love the PLA that I use. So this is a shiny dual color PLA. We got both the blue and the green here, and I think it turned out fantastic as well. When you do print out your 3D design, you might have some you know, extra PLA, maybe little hairs of PLA coming off your design or um, have some errors in your print, and you can try to fix those with post-processing. So you can use sandpaper to smooth out your design or you can use tweezers or clippers to cut off any little uh, strings of PLA filament. But my printer, I'm, this is what I love about the Elego 3 uh, Neptune Pro is that it's, you know, I think I got a great design just right off the bed without really needing to do anything afterwards. So super happy with how it turned out. Um, hope you enjoyed my tutorial today on how to use the Elego 
3 Neptune Pro. Please check out the rest of my channel for other 3D printing content, 3D pen content, and coding for kids. And don't forget to like and subscribe.